Broadcasting from New York, New York. It's Grant's Rants, Hollywood Talk. Jen Shaw shows out despite facing 50 years. Andy Cohen reunites with the kids of Real Housewives. The fakery of RHONJ has us frustrated. We question, is there a place for the talk? And the 2004 Britney Madonna Christina Kiss is still relevant today. That and more with Ryan Bailey. begin i am joined by ryan bailey from the podcast so bad it's good with ryan bailey welcome back to the rants it is good to be back to the rants i am ready to rant i am i am energized to rant i don't remember when the hell we did the last episode but i know we did it i just it probably was over a year ago i don't know but it's about time we have you (laughs) back on let's talk about real house lives of salt lake city now i know you've covered this to death but I have not, actually. I had a Good. week off, so I have not waited on Jen. But after – so here's here's the latest. After yeah. Jen was arrested, and we all know she was charged for conspiracy to commit the wire fraud yeah. and conspiracy to commit the money laundering, now she's pleading not guilty, but she wants to keep filming. What is wrong with her? Well, I mean, there there's so many ways to look at this. I mean, something deeply is wrong with her, but that happened, obviously, years ago. <laughs> now it's 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 – what can the cameras capture? I mean, this is, I, don't, I hate to say housewives gold because at the end of the day, she possibly hurt real people with these scams that she allegedly did. But at the same time, this is not new to the housewives. It's new to Salt Lake. Right. It'll be very interesting to see how production handles this. I think it could be really, really exciting, but it does. I mean, it, it, could, it makes the viewer forced with a decision about morality. And I think sometimes with housewives, especially you start feeling better about yourselves because you are, you might not be living the large life they, like they are, but you're not going to go to jail possibly, you know? Right. Yes. Now my thoughts here are, I, I knew, I don't know Jen personally, but I knew, <laughs> I knew the type of person she was from the beginning. I can read people really well. I have gone out of my way to just say, like, I don't like this woman. I don't trust this woman. This is before everything like broke. It's just, she, she made it, she made it for decent TV, not great TV. I, I'll give her decent TV. She did carry a lot of the last half of that season. But, um, as far as like her character goes, like, I'm not surprised. None of this surprises me. I, I had a feeling about her. I, I don't trust her. And this, I, I'm always right. I have to say this confirms my suspicions and but, it makes me feel validated. But Grant, it's weird in a way, like you're right. Like she really, she pushed so hard. Like she fell into every housewife trope. Everyone. Like she was trying to do it like on purpose, but it's so funny by being that loud. She was almost able to hide in plain sight because at the end of the day, I was thinking Mary Cosby was the one doing illegal things. Right. And I was like, well, this girl is just being loud and potentially obnoxious and potentially fabulous. But I didn't think of her as a criminal. It's so weird how we we kind of just accept what we see. And I wrote her off as just somebody that was trying way too hard when in reality she was hiding in plain sight, possibly. And it just goes to show you. Like, even when I was confused about what she did for a job and they talked Hmm. about it on the third part of the reunion, I was still like, okay, I obviously don't know what that is, but I, I guess I believe it. It's so weird what we're willing, we're, we're blindly willingly to believe, right? you know, and then like somebody like Mary Cosby, I was like, no, she's got to be a criminal. She's got to be, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's like she explains some weird form of like digital acquisition and marketing. And we're all like, oh, yeah. 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 Right. Right. I, I, I heard digital and I was like, OK, sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say about her um, other than I, I still don't trust her, I, especially after all this. Us Weekly now claims that uh, Jen is, quote, humiliated that this is happening in the public eye. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, really? I wish I wish you would be a little more humiliated and stop <laughs> posting on social media. I mean, that yeah. part, I she's posting on her stories, like doing lip syncing in the car, acting like she's all bad. And even if she is innocent of these charges, I feel it is so bad form because these people lost like these these elderly people lost money one way or the other. So even if she is innocent, 
it is in such poor taste to go on and still act like nothing has changed to, to post things about free Jen Shaw. Like, it's funny to us, but don't be in on a joke that you're accused of. You know, don't yep. be in on that. It's kind of gross. Classic narcissist in my point of yes, view. Yes, exactly. Yep. Well, but that's classic housewives, right? Oh, well, yeah. They all have a degree of that. She's not the first to be view herself this highly either. But, you know, if you are, you know, she's got this, 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 uh, what's coming up in October, the trial. Yeah. Now, wouldn't you think that a judge is watching the social media? Does she just totally straight up not <laughs> care? Like, I wish I didn't care well, as much as Jen is, does. I mean, I don't know who's advising her, but it does seem like the courts are a little backwards, even in the sense that they didn't even know how to put a call together. Like all the Bravo fans were able to be on that call where she was arraigned yeah. and they didn't know how to mute the uh, the Bravo fans. So I don't think any of this, like the law and order system really knows what they're doing. Uh, you know, I don't think they're used to dealing with somebody with social media presence and things like that, or at least they're not coming off like they know what they're doing at all. So Jen might be sliding, you know, being able to slide by with this stuff. I just think in the court of public opinion, you just end up losing so much worse by doing what Jen is doing right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's such a bad look. Just like you said, it's like the stupidest thing you could do. Is anyone advising her? It doesn't seem like Where's it. Where's Coach Shaw? Where we need a, a Coach Shaw pep talk to shut the F up. You yeah, know? well, he's looking pretty shady to me. Uh, you know, he's looking pretty uh, phony to me. Now, did you hear this this soundbite on Twitter that somebody recorded from a voicemail that allegedly she left? Did you hear this? It was um, well, asking well, for money. Grant, to tell you the truth, though, there has been so many recordings of Jen released. It's like, <laughs> I mean, it's like Grateful Dead bootlegs at this point. Like everybody has a, an illegal recording of Jen Shaw. And I get confused because there's so many out there. But what, explain what this one was. It was just one of those, like, you have to call us back at this number. Oh, gonna... yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. mean, I, God, that, that puts like chills in my spine. And I, I feel like all, all the Shaw squad that work for her, like, do they put Shaw squad on their resume when they're looking for new jobs? Yeah. What does the LinkedIn say? Because, I, yeah. Yeah. Do, can you, can you put that on the LinkedIn at this point? Yeah. Is it, I mean, it's gotta be damaging. What a waste of time. I mean, you know, I, I don't get how these people could not know, but that's that's you hear the hear there. there. But now th th this is kind of lost on me. They're questioning now if Jen will be full time, if she's going to be full time for season two, or if she'll be able to finish out the season. But also, a source says that it's highly unlikely she'll be asked back for a third season. I don't believe it. I think this is going to put that show on the map. I, I oh, why would they h hide her away now? I agree with you completely. I think that article is completely false. I think Jen is begging to be on as much as she can. Yeah. And I think it's probably one of those things where the production company equally agrees with her. If she's dumb enough to live her life on camera at this point, I think they are going to film it and it is going to make the best second season of any housewife show, potentially. I mean, they have filming of the day that the FBI <laughs> got her. I mean, they're, you know, if, if they, I mean, at this point, there's so much goodness potentially that could be in this show that the production just has to make sure not to fumble the ball and to be able to tell the story in a clear, concise, entertaining way. And I have a feeling with seeing Jen post on social media that she is fully ready to go, you know? Oh, yeah. And not only that, this didn't stop Bravo in the past with Teresa. Teresa was all but celebrated for going to jail. So she even got the spinoff. So, I mean, I don't see why they automatically turn on their talent now. No, I mean, but, and Bravo at this point is, I would imagine, starting to get used to their housewives dealing with the law, whether it be Teresa Giudici, whether it be all the lawsuits, NeNe Leakes is suing Bravo. You know, there's so many mm. things, you know, that I have a feeling Bravo has at least somewhat of a handle or somewhat of a plan of attack when these things happen and I do not think uh, just shutting them off and not having them on camera is part of their attack, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, of course, Andy Cohn is backing away from all of this and, you know, <laughs> he has nothing to do with it. Talking about it very briefly on the radio show, you know, he's there for the good times, but when anything looks a little <laughs> bad, where does he go? I, where does he go? <laughs> I always think about that. Wouldn't it be funny if the one, if the one call Jen Shaw, you know, you get one call when you go to jail and it's to Andy Cohen. Yeah. 
Well, I wouldn't put and it he, past and her. He, and, he does, and he doesn't answer. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past her. She's facing up to 50 years and she's doing the Instagram stories. So... Uh, I, I mean, everybody, like, how does this, I mean, I really don't see this ending without some sort of jail time. And I'll be really curious if Stuart, the, you know, number one Shaw squad assistant, how much he takes the uh, fall for this. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I'm just curious how this all crumbles. And I think it's going to be a fat, I mean, you know, just in terms of movies, we love things like this when like a whole financial empire potentially crumbles. We love it in movies. And now this is a real life movie. I just think they have to be able to tell it the right way and to be able to get those other ladies reactions and how they deal with it and their friendships with Jen, I think is going to be endlessly fascinating. Yes. And they've been quite quiet. So they are saving it for the show, which is a good thing for people like you and me. So I'm glad to hear about that. I'm glad we're not, they're not out there doing press and tweeting and all this stuff. So we have something to look forward to as far as the authentic reactions go. Let's hope. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Speaking of Andy, though, in an effort to raise ratings, which is my guess, (laughs) uh, I watch what happens live. They're going to have these Bravo kids. I watch what happens live, former and current kids. Anyone in particular you're excited to see or want to see? I got to say, I mean, I really love I I do love ideas like this. I mean, I've been uh, campaigning on my podcast to do to to have Bravo start really it's like MTV. They have this deep catalog of amazing reality shows and MTV doesn't seem to ever rerun like made or true life or pimp my ride. And I think Bravo is the same way in that they have this rich history now of 15 years plus. And I would love to see all of the kids that I grew up watching. I mean, I got teary eyed when uh, uh, Candy's daughter Riley went to college this season on Atlanta. I mean, I really I get um, there's an emotional part of me that really gets invested in these kids or even watching like, you know, uh, Jeannie Keo's kids and uh, all the OC kids. Right. I mean, I love that they're doing this. I don't and I hope it does boost ratings, but I love more so that Bravo is leaning in to the history of what they've created. I think that is so important because at the end of the day, this is supposed to be stories about these people and these families. And the kids are a huge part of that. I was on a clubhouse uh, on Friday with um, Allie. Um, uh, what's her name's daughter uh, from New York? Okay. Uh, um, oh, um, Jill, at, Jill. Uh, Jill, Jill. Yeah, Jill's daughter, Allie. And Allie wasn't asked to be on that, which was like shocking to me because Allie was such a big part of those scenes in uh, with Jill's stuff on New York. And uh, I mean, I love they do it, but it is interesting who they chose and who they didn't. Well, do we think that Jill was one of the complaining mothers that called up Andy? Uh, she she did. Uh, uh, <laughs> Allie confirmed it on the clubhouse that uh, Jill is one of the people that uh, called Andy to complain. Well, that checks out. I believe it. I don't yeah. even need to see a receipt or any evidence. I believe <laughs> it on hand. Uh, for me, speaking of New York, I actually I want to see Avery. I want to watch Avery. I'm curious to see Avery Singer, how she's going to behave. What type of person, coming from Mario, coming from Ramona, who is this? How does she carry herself? We, we, <laughs> we see only, if we're lucky, snippets from the show, and a lot of it is old. So this is her time to be in the spotlight. What is she going to do and say about her mother? I, this one I'm curious about. I, I mean, really, it is a crapshoot on which way it could go. She could be completely self-aware and realize how her mom sometimes comes off on the show and she could be a delightful uh, young lady or she could be a complete monster and has taken all of the bad aspects of Ramona and uh, you know, is the new breed or new class of Ramona, uh, which would be fascinating to see her, you know, be interviewed. And did you, you saw that she, she is now a consultant for uh, cameo, the app. A consultant. What does that mean? I, I think she's in talent development, so oh. I don't know exactly what that means. But she has a full time paying job with Cameo, which is the app that you know all the uh, reality stars are on to say hi to their fans. I just think that's interesting that she's leaning in, or companies are coming yeah. to her thinking that she has a little juice uh, in terms of connections. That is kind of poetic. When you say consultant, I never know in this influencer culture, is she just there <laughs> promoting it or is she actually cashing a check and actually, you know, showing up to meetings? You know, so I'm, I'm just yeah. curious. Good for her. I mean, well, <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. I mean, influencer culture is so 
psychotic in so many ways. Um, I mean, I really don't know. I mean, it'll be so interesting to see 20 years from now how it is. At some point, I feel like it's got to all explode and we got to start from scratch again because, I I mean, I just can't imagine how much crazier it's going to get each year. Oh, please. I could go off on this and I, I should and I will, but like another day. Yeah, <laughs> it's no. Rants, rants. Come it's, on, it, rants. It's all that I do is live with influence our culture. And, and I, I can't get into too much about what I do in my day job, but like, let's just say they run the asylum. They are the final say with everything. And these kids, these Bravo kids, they're, they're automatically almost bored into it. You know, they're almost like, pseudo influencers from the season one of the show so it's a little exhausting like for instance quincy sonia's daughter oh yeah her instagram is now public she has yes. never participated in the show but i mean i wonder what this means now that she's so public beautiful beautiful woman by the way would love yeah. to see what she has to say would love to get her opinion on her mom but it just seems like she's kind of untouchable i gotta say it you know you're really she's now she's somebody, and I, I mean, I don't want to say unlike Avery, but it seems like she managed to be raised away from the public eye. Sonia never put her on the show or she didn't agree to go on the show. And she seems like she's just a classy young woman. And I love the sense of humor she has about her mom because she's reenacting some of her mom's famous housewives poses in her public Instagram now. Mm-hmm. And it seems like she has such a good handle on what her mom represents and I think, I mean, it just seems like she has a really good head on her shoulders. And I got to give Sonia uh, credit for that. Sonia can be super crazy on the show, but I love that there's an aspect to her that potentially is an amazing mother. Yeah. And you know who seems like the anti-influencer of all of this is RHOC's Brianna, Vicky's daughter. Always <laughs> been a fan. I I just, I think she's so authentic. And maybe smile to see her on this list. Because I don't know, first of all, I don't know why she's bothering. She's a young mom. She's so moved on. But I'm glad that they extended the invitation to her. Well, and I do think, you know, you got to remember, this was a huge part of Brianna's life. I mean, yeah. this, not just Vicky's. I mean, this is how she was raised. I mean, we went through remembers, you know, all her surgeries on the show and oh, her yeah. marriage to, to Ryan, her uh, anger with Brooks, uh, so many great Brianna moments. So and uh, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, I love these. Where are they now? I want to. I The, the only the only suggestion I would have had for Bravo is I think there is so many great kids that they should have done a week of this and goes go show by show with the kids. Like, have all the OC kids on one night. Have all the New York kids on one night, you know? That's a good point. I don't know why they're doing this all at once. Andy did allude to something. This is part of something bigger. I don't know what that all means. But, yeah, I mean, he did also he did say that they were limited because they could only fit up to 13. So, yeah, why not space it out? This is going to get a lot of attention. I don't know why they're going to do it all at once. And I want to see them interact. I hope they test yes. this. I hope they test them for COVID and they can do this in person because I don't want to see all this in Zoom box. Boxes. You know, I'm not interested uh, yeah, exactly. in that. I want to see um, them interact and question each other and like, you know, yes. have a moment. I don't want them to be on mute until it's their turn to answer a question. But take it a step further and put them in a house for a weekend. Put them in a house for a week. Though, you know, Real World Homecoming on Paramount Plus is picking up 29 years later from the original season of the MTV's The Real World. And I think it's so fascinating. They're just in a, they're in the same loft and they're having real conversations that are lengthy and, you know, talking about the years that have passed. And I would love to be able to see them compare their experiences and not in a rushed format. Yeah. I, the, the only thing I don't have any interest in seeing with any of this is Kim Zosiak's daughters. I don't need them. I don't need to <laughs> talk about influencers. They've got everything. They're all, all they do is sell water bottles and diet pills. And I have no interest in giving them any more airtime. Yeah. I mean, I don't think, I think they're still so in it that they don't have any perspective on it. I would be curious to hear Brielle 20 years from now. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe at 20, let me check in with me in 20 years. Cause right now I don't have any interest. No, I'm not. I couldn't care less. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I wonder what's going to come up all this. There's no air date for the show, which like, OK, I mean, you know, I think if you're going to get all this press, you'd want to at least throw out a ballpark date. But um, hmm, I'm wondering if this is something part of something bigger. Maybe this is like Let's- the start to see if there's interest, if there's smoke, you know? Well, I mean, you know, all signs point to yes in terms of. Bravo is really cross pollinating. You know, we got Winter House with cast members of Southern Charm and uh, 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 Summer House. 
Uh, that's now Winter House. Um, you know, they're they're uh, they're cross pollinating all of these shows and mixing up the cast. And I got word this weekend that Paige from Summer House is supposedly dating uh, uh, Craig from uh, Southern Charm. Oh. I mean, so like, I mean, it, it's interesting. It just seems like yeah. they are trying to really expand the Bravo cinematic mm-hmm. universe, kind of like 90 yeah. Day Fiance has been doing so well. Um, yeah. And I think Bravo needs to get on top of it because right now, 90 Day is winning the battle. They get twice the ratings that any Bravo show does. And they, you know, their shows are made way cheaper than Bravo. So I personally want Bravo to throw as much against the wall and see what sticks. Yeah, my concerns are right now that they're they're too concerned in development about Peacock and getting shows over there and yeah, expanding the yeah, universe. Yeah, yeah. I don't feel like there's enough time spent on Bravo itself. It almost feels like an afterthought as to me as a viewer, and I'm seeing less stuff, less new development. I mean, what what brand new shows have come out other than Salt Lake City in the last couple of months? Like, it's concerning to me, but it's you know nothing we can do about it. In these last no, moments, yeah. In these last moments, though, I want to just get your take on Real Housewives of New Jersey. The fakery is getting to me. How do you feel? Yeah, you know, I watched it this week, and I watched it through a lens of, if you watch Melissa and Joe Gorga, and you watch it through a lens of, these people are totally acting, you start to see the cracks in all of the facade. You start to see Mm. where oh my God, this really is just full on acting potentially. And Joe Gorga is, you know, you get, you get the sense if you look at it through that lens that he loves it. He loves acting the part. He loves getting into it. He really, Mm -hmm. I think, uh, fancies himself now an actor. And I, I mean, this is, this is me complete speculation, but if you look at it, there is a bit of glee. He really, and he eggs on the other guys. He's definitely the ringleader. And I think he really bring like I can see them doing cut and him going to Melissa like oh we nailed it we nailed that scene did you see how mad I got like I think he's proud of it in that way and Melissa goes with it too especially in that drunk ride back from in the car you know yeah. like there, there's no part of me that thinks they would ever split up you know. No, the whole thing is so stupid. I mean, the, the, she's out there in the press promoting the show, saying that they, it's been tough for the last year. He said it on the show this week. You know, they've been going through tough times. But when we see anything tough happening on the show, it's it's given to us in the form of a prank. It's a joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah, like yeah, not yeah. even like there's no stakes. Like we're not even seeing well, anything. And also, Joe, no crap. Like we've all gone through a tough year. Like everybody's gone through a right. tough year. So he's gone through the same tough year we have. I don't think there's anything pressing. I don't sometimes understand the passionate Melissa Gorga hate. Like she's not my favorite, but she's not the worst. I don't think, I mean, I think it's fine. Like I, I much, I would, I mean, people like Teddy bore the crap out of me from Beverly Hills. So, you know, Melissa's fine. And she always, I will always give her credit for giving us a, a great storyline of uh, being a pop star trying to be one with on display, you know? Yeah. yeah. And to yes and your point about Joe Gorga, to me, it's like he's that guy that's going to be cool doing all this, playing that misogynist guy. Yeah. yeah Most yeah. guys aren't going to want to take on that label, but they, they'll tell him, you know, this is relatable to so many women to have, you know, an old school husband or someone that wants yes. them to stay home. You're the housewife that's forced to stay home, Melissa. He's upset that you're taking on extra work. It fits the narrative, and he's the biggest fool that would love to do it he'll play the part you know yeah 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 wow so i mean but but also and Teresa, i mean Teresa is just like you wind her up and point her in the right direction but i don't think i don't think her brain i don't think her brain wires connect you know i don't think she even really follows the plot herself they just let her go into scenes and she looks confused half the time and the other time she'll just say a crazy opinion and 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 that's all I guess all we want or expect from her, you know. Pretty much, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I, I, it's funny. Point her in the right direction. That's about all you can do. To wind her up tight and let her go. You well, know? I mean, John, the first episode. I mean, the first episode, she comes out of nowhere and goes, "I hear he does things at the gym." Like, I'm like, "What do you mean? Like yeah. your legs day? Like you work on his arms? Like what? What do you mean? Like she has no yeah. specific information and just went in and blew up that birthday party." And it was amazing TV. They didn't. They weren't able to kind of keep that tension going. I'm sick of Jackie and Evan, and I hate hearing their names anymore because I believe that they kind of 
let the air out of that plot line to the point where you're now sick of Jackie and Evan, you know? Yeah. I, I, I'm so sick of the whole thing to be honest with you, but yes. Well, I mean, well, Grant, isn't that the interesting part of these shows is that we're like old married couples with these shows. Like we're like, damn, damn this show, you know, but we don't stop ever watching it cause it's family, but we're just like, ah, oh, it's just, ah, oh, it's so hard every week to do this. Yeah. Oh, it is. And then, you know, you watch, Teresa go and watch what happens live and she, you know, you know, you know, you know, she talks herself in a circle <laughs> saying that someone part of the group told her that about Evan, which in my opinion had to be a producer, but because she can't yes. say it, she just ends up just yes. repeating, you know, you know, you know, and it's like, and you know, he, Andy Cohen's over there, like white knuckling it in the chair. So afraid that she's going <laughs> to say something about production. And it's like, we're, we're not idiots, man. We're not dumb. Just, just lay it out there. Just lay it out. Yeah, but uh, it's too much. Yeah, I, w- I would kill someday for a reality show of the reality show. Like, I think that's really where things should be headed is, you know, opening it more up to production, letting us in on what they're – because I think that's a whole show in itself. Yeah. To have to wrangle these housewives, to have to wrangle anybody to, like, make sure they've had a couple drinks going into the show. There's so much – I have questions about, about physical production. And I think as Bravo fans that have been with us since since the beginning, our minds wander. We start to think about how these are made and how real is real. And uh, I mean, I, I think that's where my curiosity lies nowadays. Absolutely. People can see through it. You don't have to be a TV show producer to see some of this stuff. So I've been saying it for years. I hope the hell that we can get to that point where they break the fourth wall. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, we'll still exactly. watch. In fact, yes, it, I mean, might, it might I'll renew. Watch harder. I'll yeah. watch better. Yeah. yeah, it might renew interest in some lapsed viewers. But, you know, we st- until then, we have to believe that this idea fell out of the sky to Teresa's head. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> well, more with Ryan coming up in part two. We're going to talk a little bit about some ideas about what's going to happen with the talk. Not that I really care, but we're going to pretend we do. But we're going to get into <laughs> it. And then a little bit about Justin Timberlake and some other good stuff. So stick with us. That and more in a moment. Now this. Now this. 